Hi, in this tutorial, we're going to create the horizontal tank tread on top of our roller chain assembly. Now, I want to show a couple of additions that I've made off camera. So, as you can see here, I have a number 440 screw and it's a half inch long. And on top of that is a nylon lock nut, which is also a number 440 nut. And so I've uh, used the same process as before. I've done an array along a path. And on my, uh, one of my previous videos, I show how I did the, um, this array for the chain roller chain link assembly itself. So as you can see, um, <clears throat> every other link has the screw within it. So you can see that the inner link is the one with the screw um, inside it. And in addition to that, um, I've also edited the, um, the sprocket because right now, if I go to a cross section, you can see that the sprocket needs to fit <clears throat> between the roller chain links. And this, it, it fills every other gap. So as you can see, um, this, this gap is filled, this gap is not filled, this gap is filled, this gap is not filled. So every other gap is filled with a screw. Therefore, every other tooth needs to disappear on the sprocket. So that's why it's like that. But there's still some experimentation that's going on with this. Um, I didn't make a tutorial on this because um, there was a lot of R&D I had to do and a lot of trial and error and it's still not completed. This is not the final form. This is just what I have right now. So uh, we're going to leave it at that. So uh, let me exit out of this section view. So what we're going to do from here is we're going to array this. Um, it takes some time to load. So um, as you can see, I have two of them and basically all you have to do is a rectangular array. So you're gonna to come to uh, right here, rectangular pattern, you're gonna click on it and you're gonna have some options here. And I set mine to be two inches away, two inches distance. And the thing that we now need to do now is we need to create the actual uh, crossbar. So the way that we're gonna do that is um, we're going to measure uh, between these two posts. So um, it's pretty obvious to me what the distance is here um, because I know that it's two inches from one to the other. So as you can see, that's, that's exactly what we're going to get. It's two inches from uh, between. So that's going to be one of our parameters. And we need to design um, within the bounds of the uh, link. So I'm going to just get a measurement here from here to here. Whoops. It's supposed to be it's supposed to inspect from this line to this line and that's point 184. So that's a good thing to remember there um, because we, we don't want our tread to come out too much. So that being said, um, we could choose to create this within the context of the assembly. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at the planes that exist. And the XZ plane is the one that I want to use. So I'm going to create a sketch on that plane. And it is not perfect. Um, it's not perfect because it kind of crosses through and it doesn't, it's not sitting on top the way it should, but that's okay. Uh, we're going to work with it anyway because, uh, you know, we, it's, it's not that uh, different. So um, let's drag out a, a three point uh, rectangle. So come to rectangle, three. Uh, or rather a uh, center rectangle, sorry about that, center rectangle. And <clears throat> we're gonna drag this out uh, to about here. 
we can just rotate this a little bit. And once we have this, we can start to set some dimensions here. So this is going to be um, about 0.2 inches, something like that. Um, we can always change that value. Now, I don't know if we want to move this out a little bit. Um, that might be necessary. So we might want to move that about here. Drag this back. And so uh, once we have the shape and the dimensions to work off of, then we can finally create this uh, on its own. I'm going to bring this in a little bit, maybe 2.2, something like that. Okay, I'm going to drag this back. So it's going to be some, something like this. And as you can see, that, that sort of size uh, satisfies our, our needs. You can see. Okay, great. So right now we're working within the context of the assembly. But if we want to work in a little bit of a more uh, static environment with less um, with less uh, things in the way, we have a lot of components here. So this is sort of slowing down my ability to work. So what I want to do is I want to open this in its own part. What I'm going to do is just kind of delete this. That was really just to get a feel for the size. Um, we, we want to create this on its own. So uh, we want to co come over here to new design, create a new design, come to origin, and we're going to come here to the top plane within our new part. And we want to create a rectangle, center rectangle. And this is going to be the same dimensions as before because we know that that's in the ballpark of what we want. So you could just type in those values. And once you have them, um, you can add some fillets to these edges. Uh, that could be something to start with. We're gonna add fillets to all the edges. And um, with that completed, what you want to do is add a circle. So add a circle to uh, the two sides. And you can also set a dimension here between them to be two inches. And the reason why it's two inches is because our array was for two inches. And that's two inches from the center. So the center distance is going to be one inch. and the horizontal, we have to make this horizontal to the center. So click on the point, click on this point, make them horizontal with each other. And this needs to be for a 440. So um, a number five is an eighth inch. So if I subtract uh, about 16 thousandths, that's going to bring me back to where we need around where we need to be. Um, we're we're going to set that value for now, um, but in the future we're going to depending on the manufacturing method we use, we're going to have to uh, change that. So right now the, my clearance hole is at 109, and we're going to take that number with a grain of salt, uh, like I mentioned, just for now. We don't know if we're going to be threading into this. We don't know if we're if this is just a clearance hole yet. So we're just going to leave it at that. Um, I'm going to finish the sketch. I'm going to extrude this, and I'm going to extrude this up. Um, let's make it 
And once we do that, let's look at it from the side. And let's create one more sketch. And what we want to do is we want to first project uh, this line right here. And this is going to be a construction line. And I'm going to drag a line across here. And I also want to project these two lines as well. and I want them to be construction lines. Um, so with that created, we can now drag a full line across. We can drag one full solid line across. And we can also create a sort of wedge, which we're gonna have to build on later. And I didn't dimension it completely, obviously. We're, we're just gonna leave it like this for now. Uh, we're still experimenting, still in the experimentation phase. So I'm going to drag this out um, from uh, symmetrically. And let's just leave it at that. Now that I've added my tread piece to my main assembly, I can now assemble it between the two tank tread assemblies. So the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to come to joint. And what I want to do is ro rotate this whole thing downward. And I want to select the component first. And I want to select right here this ring, this top circle. And I'm going to just rotate this down again so I can look again at, at what I want to constrain to. I want to constrain to right here. And as you can see, that's going to constrain my assembly right to the part. And instead of rigid, we can choose revolute if that's what we want. But for now, we're actually going to just make it a rigid constraint. And I'm just going to hit OK. So now that that's constrained in place, we can see uh, what it looks like in the context of the assembly. And so we may have to make some additions here so that we don't have any interference uh, between the two links. And so what we can do is we can just open up this part. Um, we may need to work on it on its own. Um, so what I can do is I can attempt to make a fillet uh, to mitigate the problem. You can see that fill it on there. And I don't know if this is going to work for sure. This is just something to try. And once you save the part, it should update. Here is our end result. And it looks pretty good. So now we can do the same array along the path that we did before to create the links as well as the screw and nut. I want to create that array one more time um, if anyone is confused about what I mean by that. So the way we're going to do that is we're going to come to Create, we're going to come to Pattern, we're going to come to Pattern on Path, and the first thing I want to do is change my pattern type to be Components, and I'm going to select this component, and for Path I'm going to select this path right here. And I'm going to drag this out. Now we want to add some custom parameters. For the quantity, I'm going to put 48 because in total there are 48 of these. Now for the distance, I want this to be 0.5 inches because the pitch, the distance between the two pins is a quarter inch and we want this to be on every other link. Therefore, it's going to be 0.5 instead of 0.25. So type in 0.5 or the distance. And this is not going to be extent, it's going to be spacing. So you're going to see that the distance changed. Like I said before, we want it to be 0.5. I'm 
and that's going to set the parameter accordingly. So as you can see, we're almost there. Now we need to come to orientation and we need to set this to path direction. And that's going to put it um, in the spot where we want it to be out, outward, all facing outward. And that's how you do the pattern on the path.